off the cuff and taking it kind of informal again today, here's today's topic. Oh wait, I forgot this one too. Let's work out three more problems directly from the homework assignment, see if we can figure out how to do this. All right, here we go. Let's try solving a system of equations using the elimination method. Let me start by showing you these two equations, 2x plus y equals 12 and negative 5x minus y equals negative 33. In standard form, these two are a pair of linear equations. Here, let me show them to you on a graph. The red equation is the 2x plus y equals 12. The blue equation is the negative 5x minus y equals negative 33. And each of them has solutions. For example, the red one has a solution at 5, 2 x of 5, y of 2. The blue one has a solution at 5, 8. And those each are solutions to the individual equations. Here's the magic spot that solves both of them. 7, negative 2 is a solution to both equations. We found that easily enough through graphing. Now let's go find it through the elimination method. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the two equations and we're going to line them up. X's, Y's, equals, constant. All the things that go together are in vertic nice vertical lines. And then we're going to make sure that we got one of the variables that matches. And by matches, I mean equal but opposite values. Take a look at the Y's. Here's positive 1Y. Here's negative 1Y. Those are opposites of each other. And now they're matched and ready for me to do what elimination does. And it's pretty cool. I am literally going to add the two equations together. Bet you didn't know you could do that, did you? What? We're going to take the x values that are like values, and we're going to add them together. 2x and negative 5x together make negative 3x. Then I'm going to take the y values and add them together. Well, look at what happens. 1y and negative 1y cancel each other out. There are no y's left for me to write in the bottom. Now I do have to take the, neg excuse me, the 12 and negative 33 and add those together and get negative 21. But take a look at what I have now. By adding the two equations together with matching y's, I've created an, a new child equation with the same solution set as the original two equations, which means that one value, but with no y's in it. And now it's a real simple piece of algebra for me to figure out what x is. x is 7 just like we did with substitution. Now I'm going to plug that 7 back into one of these equations. Unfortunately, in the elimination method, generally it's not quite as simple as it was with the substitution method. Still not terribly difficult, though. 2 times the x value of 7 plus the y that we don't know yet will make 12. 2 times 7 makes 14, so 14 plus y is going to equal 12. And if we subtract 14 from both sides to get the y alone, what we find is that y is negative 2. Negative 2. 7 and negative 2 is our solution, just like we saw back here. Let's try it again here on problem number 2. Again, we're going to line up the parts. If they're not already, we have to rearrange the equation so they are. Here's the x's, here's the y's. Here's the equals, here's the constants. Again, we're going to make sure one of our variables matches up. We've got a 2x and a negative 2x, and those match. They're going to cancel each other out. We're ready to add the two equations together. 2x and negative 2x cancel out and make no x's. Negative 5y and 8y together make a total of 3y. And negative 5 and negative 8 make a total of negative 63. Divide both sides by 3 to get the y alone. And we find that uh, y is negative 21. Seems like kind of a big number, but I assure you it's correct. Now, we're going to take that y value, plug it into either of the original equations. It really doesn't matter which one. And use that to figure out what the x value is. Let's see. Let's use the top one just because it's on top. 2x minus 5 times the y value of negative 21 equals negative 5. So 2x minus, well, let's see, it's minus 5 times minus 21. The two negatives will make a positive, and 5 times 21 is 105. And that will all equal negative 5. Now I'm going to subtract 105 from both sides. By the way, the 
fact that this is positive 105 that we're working with here is the single biggest mistake that people make on this problem and in elimination problems to begin with. It, since it's negative times negative, that makes positive. Virtually everyone who misses this problem writes this as a negative and then tries to add 105 to both sides, which gives you an absolutely wrong answer. Subtracting 105 from both sides makes 2x equal negative 110 and divide both sides by 2 to find that x is negative 55. As before with substitution, if you discover that the number here doesn't feel right for some reason, then there are two things to do. The first is to take these numbers and plug them back in to both original equations. They should both come up happy. If they don't, you've got the wrong set of numbers. The other thing to do is drop them into a graphing calculator like Desmos and see if that really is the answer you come up with. Let's try one more, way more complicated this time. Now our job, as before, is to line up the x's, the y's, the equals, and the constants. It's also, though, to get one of the variables to match up. There's nothing I can multiply 6 times to make 5. Nothing simple anyway. Same with 5 to 6. There's nothing I can multiply times 3 to make 7. I'm going to have to multiply both of these things at the same time so that I create some multiple of the original equations that gets those variables to match up. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top equation times 5. What that'll do is it'll make this term into 30x. Why is that valuable? Because I can take the bottom equation times 6. That'll make this bottom term negative 30x. And positive 30x and negative 30x will cancel each other out. Everything else will change as well, but that's okay. Here's my new top equation. 5 times 6x makes 30x. 5 times negative 3y makes negative 15y equals 5 times negative 6 makes negative 30. Here's my new bottom equation. 6 times negative 5x makes negative 30x. 6 times negative 7 makes 42y. 6 times 41, goodness, I believe that makes 246. Notice the top equation is the same as the top equation. It's just multiplied by a factor of 5. The bottom equation is the same bottom equation. It's just multiplied by a factor of 6. But what's happened is now my x values are equal and opposite, and I'm ready to add the two equations together. The x terms add to cancel out. Now, negative 15 and 42y add together to make a total of 27y. And negative 30 and 246 combine to make a total of 216. That may not look terribly obvious, but if you grab a calculator and give it a try, you will discover that when we divide 27 out of both sides, that y equals 8. And that's half my answer. I got the y this time first. That doesn't matter. It's just a question of what I decided to cancel out first. And finding the original x value now, the one that goes here, is as simple as it was before. Plug this value into any of the original equations, whichever one you think is going to most easily get you your answer to come out. I think I'll try the first one. 6x minus 3 times the y value of 8 is going to equal negative 6. That means 6x minus 24 is negative 6. And so if I add 24 to both sides, I get that 6x is really 18. And divide both sides by 6 to get the x alone, and we find that x was 3. There, 3, 8 is my magic value that solves, that is a solution to both original equations. So that's it. You can also solve a system of equations by elimination, which lines the two equations up, gets one of the variables to match from one equation to the next, adds the two equations together so that those that variable cancels out, and then that lets you solve for one of the variables. Plug that value back into the original equations and get the other value. Good luck.